Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about distribution of probabilities of um, discrete random variables. Um, in particular, we will talk about um, probability mass distribution for discrete random variables. Um, this lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics for um, teenagers and high school students. It's presented on unizor.com. Um, if you watch it from any other source, I do recommend you actually to use unizor.com because um, every lecture contains um, very detailed description of whatever the topic is uh, at issue. And uh, it also uh, contains some uh, additional educational functionality, like you can um, enroll into a specific topic, you can take exam, etc. The site is completely free, so I do suggest you to watch it from unizor.com. Now let's talk about this particular topic. Well, first of all, we are talking only about discrete uh, random variables. Random variables with discrete distribution of probabilities. Well, let me just remind you what it means. It means basically th that the random variable uh, C, which takes uh, real values, takes only finite or infinite but countable, I put these three dots, um, values, real values, and there is probability associated with each um, value it can take. Now, obviously, sum of all these probabilities is equal to 1. Now, even if it's an infinite, if it's an infinite, obviously, the, um, the probabilities should decrease, and uh, it, it would be still summed up with uh, to, to, to a 1. All right, so this is basically a full description of um, random variable which takes discrete values with certain probabilities. However, well, what kind of description this is? It's, it's a table, basically, right? The value and the probability. The value and the probability. Now, mathematicians don't really like to deal with tables which define certain things. They prefer formulas, for instance, like this. Or they prefer graphs, something like this. This is a more natural um, representation of uh, functions in mathematics. So, um, to make this particular description of the probabilities a little bit more in tune with the main line of um, mathematical thinking, uh, mathematicians have invented a function, basically, which describes exactly the same thing. There is absolutely no difference between description as the table and description as um, the function I'm going to talk about. This function is called probability mass um, uh, distribution function. Let me just remind you a story from the physics course. I mean, in the physics, for instance, we're, if we are talking about gravitation, we are talking about point mass, right? So it's a, like the whole Earth, actually, uh, relative to a sun, for instance, is considered to be just a material point which has certain mass. It does not have any kind of geometrical dimensions in, in this particular um, uh, theory. So, we will actually uh, approach this particular um, uh, distribution from exactly the same point. It's like a point mass. So, we are assuming that the probability is a mass which is concentrated in these points, and these are the values actually where it's concentrated. And there is no mass which is concentrated uh, everywhere else except these points. Like I I in case of gravitation, for instance, vacuum has no mass associated with it. Well, at least in classical physics. Right now everything is <laughs> completely different. So we have material points and we have vacuum in between in the physics, right? Here as well, we have certain masses concentrated at these particular points and no masses, which means zero mass, if you wish, concentrated in all other points. So, we are considering a function 
the it's called mass distribution probability mass distribution function which is defined for all real numbers um, x and it's equal to pi if x is equal to um, xi where i is 1 or 2 or 3 etc and it's equal to nilu, uh, it's equal to 0 if x is not equal to any of x i so anything outside of this set of uh, finite or infinite countable number of values outside of this set the function is equal to zero and for each point inside of this set the corresponding value is pi so that's not exactly a formula but at least it's a function which is defined on all real values because this table is not really defined everywhere right so my question is where uh, what what exactly the the value of probabilities if uh, x is equal none of these something like for instance it's one half or something like this is one if one half is not among these values well you can say okay it's not defined which is not really nice people don't like something which is not defined this is defined everywhere and the probability is zero and now let's re uh, let's recall what is the probability remember the probability is some kind of a limit of the frequency of occurrence now if the value x is not one of these x i's then it does not occur so the frequency of occurrence is equal to zero it's a perfectly valid definition so this is a function it's defined on all um, real values of argument x the values of these functions are somewhere between zero and one zero in all these cases and some probabilities which are less or equal to one in these cases so the function is defined now graphically this function might look something like this for instance this is x1 x2 x10 etc <coughs> so the function is equal to zero here then it's equal to p1 in this case then 0 here, p2 in this case, 0 here, something p3, uh, 4, 5, 10, and then 0 everywhere else. So function is equal either 0 or some positive number from 0 to 1. So sometimes we add the vertical bars because the point is not really visible if you are uh, printing it or displaying it whatever so sometimes it's displayed with these vertical bars which means that the probability is zero and then jumps up to this value of p1 then again zero then jumps to p2 etc so we have a function and this function is called um, mass distribution function probability mass distribution function okay now let me just go to a few examples Okay, example number one, we shoot the target. We have one, two, three. We associate uh, this with 10 points. Now, if a person uh, goes into this area, shoots into this area, it's two, uh, five points and two here and zero outside. So, we are talking about let's say sharpshooting competition and every person has certain level of skills now based on this level of skills we know that this particular person has the probability of hitting 10 5 2 or 0 points right so let's uh, assume that the um, uh, our sharpshooter competition participant a has the following probabilities for hitting targets this is 0 0.17 0 0.23 0 
0 0.28 and 0 0.32. Sum of them is equal to 1, of course. Okay, now, how does this particular uh, distribution of probabilities can be uh, expressed in terms of mass distribution? Well, we can say the following. This is 0, this is 2, this is 5, and this is 10. Now, 0 would be 0 0.32, 2 would be 0 0.28, 5 would be 0 0.23, and 10 probability would be 0.17. So this is our uh, mass distribution function. So this, 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 and this are vertical jumps at 0, at 2, at 5, and 10. The probability is decreasing, obviously, with the, uh, with the precision of uh, shooting uh, increases and uh, some of these probabilities is equal to 1 uh, so this is basically the representation and the function let's call it f a of x would be equal to 0 0.32 for x is equal to 0 0 0.28 for x is equal to 2 0 0.23 at x is equal to 5 and 0 0.17 at x is equal to 10 and it's 0 for x not equal to 0, 2, 5 and 10 for all other values so our random variable can take these values with these probabilities now, if you consider some other, maybe less skillful participant B, he can have 0 0.5, 0 0.15, 0 0.35, and 0 0.45. Now, why is this guy is not as good as sharpshooter? Because the probability to hit 10 is significantly less than this guy. And on the other hand, probability of completely missing the target is greater. Well, again, this particular guy represents basically um, another random variable, which takes exactly the same values, 10, 5, 2, and 0, but with different probabilities. In this case, the probabilities will be higher here, higher here, uh, lower here, and lower here. So it will be something like this, 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 and, and this. So we are distributing the same total mass, which is 1, the total probability is 1, or 100%. We are distributing differently among the possible values of the random variable. In one case, it's distributed as this, 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 and this, another this, this, this and this. But in any case, we are still distributing the same probability 1 among, in this case, four different values which our discrete variable can take. Right? Now, an up, uh, another couple of examples, very simple. What's the distribution of probabilities and uh, mass distribution function if you are rolling a die? Well, if you're rolling a die, you have one, two, three, four, five, six different values our random variable can take, right? Now, what's the probability? Well, if it's a right die, die it's one, six here, 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 and one, six here. Graphically, it would look like this. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is one, six. 
So you have this, 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 and this. So this is a graph. Uh, zero uh, until it's one, then jump up, immediately goes down. Uh, zero until two, jumps up to one six value, down, etc., up to six. So that's the probability distribution for this particular vari um, random variable. And this is a graph of the mass distribution uh, function probability mass distribution function. So probability is, you remember probability was like a measure. It can be like a length, for instance, or area, or weight, or mass, or whatever. So, uh, because it, it has this additive properties. So in this particular case, we are distributing the total mass, uh, probability mass of one, among six points, one six for each. And the last program slightly more complex. What if you have two dice and your variable, your random variable, is sum of these two dice? Now what values this sum can take? Well, the smallest value is if you have two ones, right? So one plus one, which is two. And the biggest value is 6 plus 6, which is 12. Now, in between, you can have 1 plus 2, or 2 plus 1, which is 3. You can have 1 plus uh, 3, or 2 plus 2, or 3 plus... or 3 plus 1, which is 4. Now, how can we get 5? 1 is 1 and another is 4, or 2 and 3, or 3 and 2, or uh, 4 and 1. That's our 5. Then 6 6 7. The first die dies on 1 uh, and the second on 6. Or 2 and 5, or 3 and 4, or 4 and 3, or 5 and 2, or 6 and 1. That's 7. That's the 7. Okay. Now, 8. How can 8 be done? Well, uh, it's Th there should be no ones, right? Because if you have one uh, die to show the number one, another maximum is six, one is six is seven, which means eight we will never get. So the minimum is two. Minimum is two, and then another to get eight should be six, or three plus five, or four plus four, or 5 plus 3, or 6 plus 2, which is 8. Now, how can we get 9? With 9, we can get uh, the minimum number 3, right? So one of them should be 3, and another should be greater, which is 6 in this case, or 4 and 5, or 5 and 4, or 6 and 3, which is equal to 9. Now, to get 10, we have to have one of them at least 4, and another will be 6. Or 5 and 5, or 6 and 4, and that will be 10. Now for 11, we should have minimum 5, and then it can be either 5 plus 6, or 6 plus 5, which is 11. And for 12, there is no other way but to get this, right? So, how about our probabilities? Well, probabilities is, as you understand, the number of uh, combinations of these two dice divided, which, which uh, gives us a concrete number, divided by the total number of combinations. Now, total number of combinations is obviously 6 times 6, because we have two dice, and each one of them has six different values. So it's 6 times 6. Now, how many combinations are when uh, our sum is equal to 2. Only one combination out of 36. So the probability is 136. 
In this case, we have two combinations, so it's 236. In this case, it's 336, 436, 536, 636. That's the maximum, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Then it goes down again. 536, 436, 336, uh, 236, and 136. So our distribution of probabilities is the following. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 different values our sum can take. Sum of two die, two dice. Sum of two dice can take eleven different values from two to twelve, right? So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now the probability is concentrated only in points from 2 to 12 included, in, in, in inclusive and only on uh, integer numbers. Now the probability for this one is uh, 136, 236, 336, 436, 536 and 636, right? that's on 7. Then it goes down again. 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So these are points where our mass is concentrated. These from 2 to 12 and this is the value of the concentration. So the probability mass, again, the total number is 1, if you summarize them together, 1 and 2, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 26, 30, 33, 35, 36, 36, 36, obviously the sum is supposed to be 1, and it is 1. So we have distributed our total probability mass of 1 among these 11 points, on the x axis from 2 to 12 all integer points and this is the value we put into the value of this function this is the mass distribution uh, function for our random variable which is the sum of uh, two dice all right now basically that's all i wanted to say about what is the mass distribution function uh, well, a couple of warnings, actually. <laughs> People like to have some nice rules about everything. Like, for instance, probability of the sum of two random variables of, you know, is equal, uh, let's say, uh, not sum, uh, but uh, not the probability, but the um, mathematical expectation. Mathematical expectation of sum of two variables, random variables, is equal to sum of their mathematical expectations, right? Very nice rule. Well, product is not always like that, only for independent uh, random variables. So, um, mathematical expectation of the product, almost always, um, except when they're dependent on each other, equals to the product of their mathematical expectations. So. It's nice rule. Now, how about the probability distribution? It, well, if you think that the uh, uh, probability mass distribution function of two, of sum of two uh, random variables equals the sum of their uh, mass distribution functions, well, that's not true, obviously. Well, there are many philosophical reasons for this, but very simple mathematical reason is that some of these values should always be equal to 1, right? So if you add one uh, and another, uh, then obviously your sum would be equal to 2. So that's not true, obviously. So I would like to warn you that um, probability mass distribution function is not additive 
relative to the random variables it's related to. So let me just express it in a formula. So you will always be kind of on guard that this is not true. So if you have a variable C and your, your mass distribution function is this, and you have variable eta with uh, mass distribution function like this, then if you have this and you have mass distribution function this, this is not equal to this is absolutely not equal well I remember somebody was just adding two things like 1 2 plus 1 4 is equal to 1 6 something like this they just added the denominator so you do not really do this type of things it's just wrong and for many different reasons and this is wrong as well so I want you to <coughs> basically be warned that all these nice things are no, not, not always true um, now same thing about the multiplication by a constant if you multiply the random variable by the constant it doesn't mean that its um, the mass distribution function is multiplied by a constant that's absolutely not true it would be different obviously but it's definitely not the result of multiplication let me just give you a very simple example for instance this value it takes let's say one half uh, when x is equal I mean not c f one half when x is equal to let's say one and one half when x is equal to two so the whole distribution is concentrated in two areas one and two one half and one half now what is let's say function uh, random random variable 2x random variable eta equals 2 times c what its distribution well which values 2 c will take well if c takes 1 and 2 2 c will take 2 and 4 with what probability exactly the same probability would be one half and one half for x is equal to two and x is equal to four so what would be the graph it would be new graph which is two and four and it will also be one half and one half so from this function we go to this function we are not multiplying function by two because it's a completely different variable completely different distribution so I'm just warning you that these nice rules are not necessarily kind of blindly applicable but in any case I just wanted to prepare you for functional and graphical description of the distribution of probabilities because before we were actually thinking mostly in terms of tables like okay this is variable it takes value 1 and 2 with probability 1 half and 1 half for instance or x1, x2, xn with probability p1, p2, pn so this is a table kind of a view and this is instead of this tabular view we are working with function which basically contains exactly the same information as this table but it's a function and again I was just saying before that mathematicians like to deal with functions alright that's it for today thank you very much um, please go to the unisor.com to basically go through the textual description notes for this lecture it's very useful um, and uh, well that's it thanks and good luck